Okay guys, you've made the choice to carry a firearm. And there's two types of people that carry a firearm. There's one in the chamber, and there's nothing in the chamber. Here's my take on it. If you're not carrying in the chamber, there's really a couple of reasons why. Either you're not comfortable yet, and you need more training. Comes with time, comes with practice. You got to get that training to be comfortable. I understand. You may not trust in your holster. You may be worried that some magical, you know, Twilight Zone thing is going to snag your trigger and it's going to ADD and end up in your leg. ADD, by the way, stands for accidental discharge. Um, so you're afraid the round's going to go off and end up in your thigh. Okay, so you don't trust your holster. Let's get a good quality holster and not worry about that. Now, there are some people out there who say, but the Israelis don't carry with one in the chamber. And here's my side to that argument. One, you're not a Mossad or an Israeli military police operative or whatever. You're not them. They train on a very, very, very regular basis, more so than I'm willing to say that you probably put in. And if you do, that's great. You should. But here's the thing. The reason why the Israelis carry with one not in the chamber. They live in a world where they're in constant danger, constant threat. When they pull their firearm, they're assessing that threat so that when they come on target, they've chambered and they've come back into their stance. By the time they've done that, they've assessed whether or not that's a threat and they need to shoot. In the United States, if you pull your firearm and that was not a threat that you needed to pull your firearm on, you just brandished your firearm, you're in legal issue now. You only carry when the threat is real and you have to. And by that time, it could be too late to chamber a weapon. Here's some of the drawbacks to it. If I hear pop, pop, pop in Walmart and I'm with my three-year-old son, I'm going to grab my three-year-old son and hang on to him. Not let him gonna, I'm not going to let him go. I'm probably going to pick him up and put him on my hip. I can't chamber a weapon when I'm hanging on to my kid. Walking out of the movies. Caught a late movie with the wife. Someone approaches us and it is a threat where I need to put my arm to get my wife behind me and pull my firearm to address the threat. Can't chamber my weapon when I'm holding my wife and I'm protecting her. You have no one near you, but the person who means to do you harm is so close that as you're pulling, they get control of your wrist. And now you can't point it at them. If you could point it at them and manipulate, you're not chambered. You can't fire an unchambered weapon. And they're not going to give you a chance to chamber it before they've already got their hand keeping your firearm away from them. Can't chamber a weapon when someone's fighting you. Also, in that situation, when your adrenaline's rushing, you pull your firearm because your blood's pumping and there's danger, and you give it a half cock, you don't pull the slide back far enough to actually chamber around, your firearm's still unloaded. That's why if you carry, you should carry with one in the chamber. My firearm tells me that bar that's up, that tells me that when I pulled it out of my holster, it's chambered. You treat every weapon like it is loaded, regardless of whether it is or not. 
but when I carry, and you can see, I'm putting it back in my holster because I'm carrying. Actually, I'm going to put that on the table real quick. When you make the choice to carry, you've got a firearm. It's loaded, and I'm unloading it now. So, just so that you know, those gun safety nuts, I have cleared my weapon. You pull, whether you're coming with both your hands together in a good stance, holding your wife back, hanging on to your 3 for dear life, you're able to defend them. If someone has a hole in my wrist and they're trying to keep the gun away from them, and I can angle my body, angle my wrist, and point it at their stomach, their leg, any part of their body, bang, 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 they've let go of me, and I can either continue to fight by backing up and addressing the threat, and if need be, ending their life, or the shot that I put into them made them want to stop fighting because now they're in severe pain and that threat's over with whatever weapon they may have had. I've already gotten away from them and we can wait until the law enforcement shows up and them take care of that situation. Now... one in the chamber is the way you carry. If you are a 1911 guy, I love my 1911, and that's the style you choose to carry, not only should you be chambered, but you should also be hammer back, cock lock, activated. For those of you who don't know, this trigger, you take the slack out, you pull it back and it clicks. That's a double action style. You notice it did go forward because there was no round in here to force this back and re-engage the trigger. Double action. The 1911 is a single action weapon. If you notice its trigger it's right here. It doesn't have a gap right here. The only way a 1911 will fire is if the hammer is pulled back. You've taken the cock lock down off by bringing your thumb across it and pulling it down. And then on the 1911, it has a grip safety like my XDS does. So this has to be down. The cock lock, which is mine's ambidextrous, so it's on either side, has been deactivated, and the hammer is back. Now you can shoot. So if you're not carrying cock lock, it's the same as me carrying this without it being chambered. It will save your life because seconds count in a gunfight. Don't be the one who loses their family member or their own life because you've been scared. When I carry this, this is my holster I've been using, been trying out. It's a good holster. I can't get to this trigger when the firearm is in the holster. Don't be that one. I hate hearing about good people who get hurt because of a lack of training or whatever situation put them in that position in the first place. Get a good holster. This one didn't cost a lot. It was on Amazon. It was like 30 bucks. It's not 100, 150 bucks. You can get good holsters cheaper than that. A good holster is going to not let you get to that trigger. Mine is very little retention. But when I'm in my, when I'm carrying 
and it's in, I can lay on the couch and it doesn't fall out, it doesn't activate the trigger. I can jog a little bit, run a little bit, it doesn't come out. I'm moving like this, that's going to be blurry, but if I'm running, it doesn't come out. You can get ones that have a button. You push the button, you pull it out. You can get ones that have a clasp. You push the clasp over, you pull it out. Whatever you're most comfortable with, but get a holster. It won't access the trigger. Then when you're carrying with one in the chamber, which you can see this one doesn't have yet, because this bar isn't up. That's just a nice feature that the XDS has. But when you're carrying, you know you're ready, that you can defend yourself, but that you're also not going to accidentally shoot yourself. It's important. You know, I saw one video where the guy said his first reaction when someone's getting in close is to pull his knife because he's not going to get in trouble for, pulling, for having his pocket knife in his hand. He pulls his gun and, have his, and has his gun in his hand, yeah, he can get in trouble if that wasn't really a threat. Homeless guy is kind of aggressively asking you for some money, for some cash. Well, there have been situations where the homeless, or the person, supposed homeless person, wasn't homeless, and they robbed that guy. Very, very easy for me to do this. And then I can back up and pull my gun if I still have to. But, if you're chambered, and they come up on you and you didn't have time to do some other training methods and you pull and you barely get it out of your holster the second you break holster you bend it over and you start shooting that means firing from the hip which I have it on my hip bang 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 I've just saved my life and he may not die as a result the goal is not to die the guy is to stop the threat so mission accomplished he's grabbing his stomach and needing an ambulance now but you're safe and that's the goal so those are my views on it you can definitely comment if you choose to go very unchambered I mean you can try and convince me but you're you're not I'm gonna carry chambered um, if you have your own experiences one way or the other, feel free to leave that in the comments. Like, subscribe, and continue to tune in uh, for the LTC open carry, concealed carry series I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to get another holster in so that I can show you three different types of options. Uh, and even some different carrying positions but you know continue to come back because there's going to be more and more and more and hopefully you'll find something in the video that you can take with you and use and if the worst should happen maybe it'll even save your life so appreciate y'all subscribing tuning in coming back and we'll talk to you again next time